Sunitra Gupta is Professor of Theoretical Epidemiology at the University of Oxford. Good morning, Professor Gupta. Good morning. You've argued in the past against lockdowns and for shielding strategies for the for the vulnerable. Is that still your view in the face of the current picture, particularly for England? Um, yes, indeed it is. And I, I'm very heartened today to see that the costs of lockdown are being considered so carefully and discussed so thoroughly uh, as they have been in the, in the past few hours on your programme. Um, but the truth is that we need more than just a discussion uh, of these and an acknowledgement of these. We, we need uh, qu- proper quantification um, of the costs of lockdown in order to make uh, reasonable decisions about where to go from here. But the costs, uh, but the costs of not locking down. Do you question what the chief medical officers of all four regions have said? There's a material risk of the NHS in several areas being overwhelmed in the next 21 days. Absolutely not. It would not be my place to question that. I'm not an expert uh, in that field, and one of the problems we've had consistently throughout this period as we've been handing the microphone over to people who are not experts in a particular area. Um, So if I could keep my comments more to to, to the um, areas in which I I know something. Well, Um, yes, but sorry, the reason I I asked you that is because Mm -hmm. that is the key argument for lockdown, which you've said you are against this time around as you were before. That that is the key um, feature that we need to find some way At the moment, that is the prevailing feature. Now, the question of how we get go beyond it and what we do in response to it relies on two things. First of all, what is the explanation for the current situation? Why are we in this situation? Um, Is it true that this new variant is really hugely more transmissible? Um, There are various theoretical reasons to say that the more plausible explanation for why this new variant has taken over, is that it's only slightly more transmissible, but that it is competing with the old variant. And and the reason that's leading to uh, this variant dominating is because there is um, a, a sufficient sort of herd immunity in place to keep them in competition, as well as also lockdown itself, creating um, a lack of hosts for the virus to, to infect. So there are all sorts of other theoretical arguments which have not been fully debated in formulating a strategy for going forwards. So the two things we need to do, have now are a proper debate about the theoretical causes, the actual narrative. There's only one that's being adhered to, which is that we suddenly have this incredibly transmissible new variant. And that is simply not the only explanation for what's okay. going on. Well, what and studies, the other well, what, can thing, we just take them in turn? That that first point you're raising, that, that it, what you call the narrative around the new variant, what are you looking at that makes you conclude that it's not necessarily more transmissible? Professor Axel Gandhi of Imperial College London, his uh, study is one of the key ones um, that that's uh, that's informing policy. He says there's a huge difference in how easily the variant virus spreads, and it's the most serious change in the virus since the epidemic began. There is a large body of theoretical work that would suggest that the more plausible explanation, as I've just said, is that the virus has only a slight transmissibility advantage, if any at all, and that the reason, as I said, that it's spreading is because it is in very strong competition with the current, the the old variant, if okay. you like. But either way, infections are rising, are they not? That too is also um, consonant with a seasonal increase, as as well as, of course, the delays caused in the build-up of herd immunity through lockdown. So there are a number of different scenarios that explain the current situation, not to mention the consistent underfunding of the NHS. And... What we need to do now is consider those very carefully, have in sharp focus the costs of lockdown, and then come to a sensible and sustainable way forwards. And I just don't think those debates have occurred. Every time we've tried to bring up what we think is a sensible way forward that that actually reconciles all these um, different uh, problems. And, and you've said on the sense, yes, on the sense, the yes, to shield the vulnerable. Okay, well, and, and you've said that before, and I just wonder how you think that would work in a household, as many Asian households are, where you have an elderly grandparent, where you have parents working, where you would have had 
children going to school before these measures. I mean, that, that shielding is not workable for many people. I think that you have to have creative solutions for that, but you have to pour in uh, resources to actually... What, sending the elderly particular... to live somewhere else? Yes, we'd have to over a short period of time when uh, over which immunity would build up. But listen, right now, what we have is something much better. We have a vaccine. So what we need to do, right, what uh, the way forward now is to use this vaccine to protect the vulnerable. And, and that's very achievable. Obviously, protecting the vulnerable within a uh, multi-generational household is a problem. But there are several problems associated with lockdown itself. So these are problems we need to solve. They're not easy problems. But what needed to happen and hasn't happened is a thorough debate about and a proper, considered, okay. careful discussion of how we can implement this. But for now, leaving all that aside, we have a vaccine. Let's protect the vulnerable. Let's release the general population from lockdown, which has the costs of which are so profound that um, to, to simply okay. go ahead Professor with that Gupta. single option. Thank seems, you. Um, Thank very you very much, Professor Sunitra Gupta.